I've always had a passion for working with young people, and I really wanted to be a music teacher because I knew that I could work with young people and I had this passion for engaging young people in music. But as I started working with students, I noticed that inside the school system, uh, LGBTQ youth were being treated very badly by administration and by other students. As I listened to stories and witnessed and intervened on situations where youth were being bullied or picked on or called names or being told terrible things about themselves, and I found that my passion was not just working with young people, but working to empower young people who were like me. Music was not really the passion that I was feeling. My passion was working with LGBTQ youth. I went through a, quite a process with administration of them not being tolerant of me coming out and being open and being an advocate, but also I found that some people on staff suddenly were very unhappy with me bringing things to the forefront. I was threatened by a teacher who had at one time been someone who was close to me, or at least someone that I trusted. He cornered me in the side of the room and said that, uh, I want to kill you because I know what your people do and what your kind of people do to the world. It crushed me and it broke my heart and broke my trust. And it was, at that moment, one of the most terrifying and uh, liberating moments for me. I was able to then go out and, and reassess my life. I came to the center, I started co-facilitating youth groups, and I really, really started to strengthen that this was my passion. I'm teaching during the day, and I'm working with these struggles, and I'm being harassed, but in the evenings, two days a week, I'm working with young people who are stronger than I am in so many ways, and they're growing, and I'm learning from them, and they're learning from me, and it really just started to solidify in my mind that this is what I wanted to do and I needed to be a part of that change for the world. My first day of work at the center, I felt like I was on the right track for the first time. I saw what the old center was like and how it functioned, and then I got to be a part of the process of the capital campaign and uh, raising money and hearing about and seeing the plans for the building and getting the youth excited, and our group started to grow tremendously. One of the unique aspects about coming into the new building was that we had a basketball court outside, and we immediately attracted a lot of neighborhood kids, which was a great situation. A bunch of these neighborhood kids started coming inside the youth room and having snacks and playing pool and watching movies and are now attending youth groups and are wearing proudly buttons that say I'm a Qvolution straight ally at the center and it's just really been a, a, a climate change and a, a real feeling of empowerment for a lot of people to have young people saying I support you and I, I want your life to be better. We had a really amazing experience happen during group one night, which is one of the first groups where we had a bunch of neighborhood kids join us as allies, and our weekly LGBTQ crowd was there too. So we'd come together, and there was still this feeling of tension, of, of we're not sure about each other. I think people were confused as to whether or not this was a trusting environment. And we had a conversation about bullying. A youth who'd been coming to the center for about a year opened up and really told a very powerful story uh, about the experiences that this youth goes through on a daily basis and the reactions that that stirs within this youth and some of the drastic measures that this youth has considered facing uh, to end the pain. And one of our new allies from the neighborhood stood up and walked out of the room. And I found myself wondering, is, is he emotional? Is he uh, uh, understanding something for the first time? What's, what's happening with this person? And he came back a few minutes later. This really nice kid, he really, he went up and got me a Kleenex. And he was smiling. It made me feel so much better. So for me to see that happen, it was one of the most amazing human experience moments that I could ever describe. No matter what, if you're getting bullied or teased or whatever, it feels so good. Like, if, never, if, you, if you never even talk to that person again, that that one person helped you, it feels great. The center has impacted me in so many ways because I'm now able to be myself at work. Now I push myself in new ways to challenge myself as a human in areas of social justice, uh, racial justice, uh, issues of the transgender community. I'm learning and forcing myself to be challenged by these issues all the time. This is our 20th anniversary. 
the center is celebrating 20 years. And this October is an amazing time because it's National Coming Out Day happens in October. October is LGBTQ History Month. Uh, Ally Week happens in October. So there are so many things happening right now. We are so excited as the center to be celebrating 20 years, but being ready to push on into another 20 years and beyond that. So this is a time of excitement, a time of celebration, but it's also a time for us to move forward. Please, please continue your support. Whether you're supporting financially or through volunteering, we need your support and our young people need your support. I always say that we are creating the, the future leaders of our community. So when I work with youth, I'm not just working with young people. I want young people to become the people who are doing my job in the future and the people who are making this community better. So please continue to support us and please keep us on your mind and on your radar. I was just gonna say thank you so much and you're really making the world a better place in that you're all beautiful hearted and spirits people and you're all angels.